Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to work on a project like this. Uh, this is Kalatrava's project. Some of you asked me how we can uh, approach modeling it. So I'm not going to exactly create this, but I'm going to show you how we can create uh, the cables like this. Uh, so let's open a new project. I'm going to go with metric architectural template, or you can go with default metric. Let's type UN for units. Under length, I want to change the units to meters, three decimal places, and the rest I want to take care of in Dynamo. So under manage, I want to open Dynamo. Let's open a new project. And uh, first I want to draw uh, the main arc over there. Uh, I can either go with arc to create a profile or I can go with nerves curve. I would prefer the second one. Uh, I would like to go to geometry curves, nerves curve by points and uh, degrees, maybe this one. Uh, I actually need to switch back to my graph view. There we go. And I want to use three points for the profile. So I want to go with point by coordinates, control C, control V, and I want to have three points here. So let's say maybe the profile is going to be around there. Let's assume maybe the whole span is uh, negative 20. I can bring a number slider. I want uh, to draw it over there. So maybe the minimum can be negative 40, maximum can be zero. And I want to assign negative 20 here. Okay, so this is going to be the X of the third point over there. And uh, for the X of the second point, maybe I can assign half of this number. So whatever it is, uh, I'll go with a code block here. I'm going to go with uh, W divided by 2. So it's our width or span divided by 2 assigned to the X of the second point. And I want to move it up. So it's going to be a vertical profile. So how about I go with another number slider? Let's say at minimum. It's going to be 5 meters, at max it's going to be 20, and maybe I can go with 12. So this will be assigned to the Z of the second point. These three points are responsible to create the profile that I'm going to use for a sweep surface. I have three items here, so I can use a list create to connect all three at once to the point. And maybe I can go with two levels of degrees here. You can try to see which degrees works better for your profile. So uh, I want to group all these so far as my curve or sweep profile. I'm going to use sweep for the surface. So I'm going to name this as sweep profile. Now under geometry, surfaces, surface again. I want to use by sweep, so I'm going to go with this option. We created the profile already. Profile is a curve and path is also a curve. Now I'm going to maybe use uh, an arc by three points for my path. So let's keep that over there. I'll go with arc by three points and I want to bring three points. So point by coordinates. Uh, how about I use the origin here as the first point because I want the path to start over there. I'm going to connect this point to first point. Uh, for the second point, uh, I want to assign some value to X. Let's go with the number slider. Let's say at minimum, let's say 30. At maximum, it's 80 or something. So I'll go with 30 and 80. How about I go with 50 for this one? So I'm going to assign this number slider to the X of the second point and I will copy and paste it. Maybe I'll go with 70 for the X of the third point over there. And I want to assign some value to the Y of the second point. I can copy and paste one of these values and I want to go with a minimum. Let's say uh, I want to go with 10 or something. I want to assign it to the Y here. Maybe I can increase it to 20. So this is our path. So this goes to the second point of the arc and third point of the arc. And this is how I want the sweep to work. Maybe I can go with 15 here. There we go. So this goes to the path. And now we have a nice surface here. 
right? So I didn't get the dimensions from the project, but uh, please feel free to uh, search for plan and section and find better dimensions. These are just uh, some estimations. I want to create a group and I'm going to name it as sweep path. So far, we just have a surface. That's all I wanted. How about I, uh, I can group this item by itself and I want to name it as sweep surface. So I can easily find what I'm looking for later when I look at it. Uh, make sure to save your file. Uh, next, I want to get the ISO lines on this surface. So I would like to go with get ISO line. I would like to connect surface to surface. I leave ISO direction in zero. So it's going to be in the U direction probably. And to the parameter, because I want more than one line or curve, I'm going to need a kind of a list. In this case, I want to go with a sequence, which is type of a list. I want to assign, let's say, 0 0.05, for instance, to the step size that goes to parameter. And this number by default is 10. So if I go with 1 over n and then add 1 and then assign this to the amount, so n is the step size, I would make sure that this is going to cover the whole span. Okay, so these are my um, let's say arcs. So I want to maybe create a group here and name this as arcs. So how about I hide the surface for now? I will unhide it later. We just have the arcs for now. Let's work with this. Uh, see these structural members move up and down. So I want to separate the odds and even roads so I can then make those lines jump up and down. So uh, how about I go with get item at index. So because we have a list here, uh, actually if I go through the menus, it might be more uh, understandable. I want to go to inspect and I want to get item at index this one so this list of curves goes to the list what items do i want i want maybe the even ones first so zero two four six and so on in order to get them i want to create another list using range okay and i'm gonna start from zero the end of the range is as many items as we have here minus one. So that would be the end of the range, right? So let's go with count dot list, right? So in this case, if I have uh, 21 items, if I go with C minus one, which is count minus one and assign it to the end, uh, I'm going to have 21 items here. Okay. Uh, and now I want to change the step size to two. So this is going to give me the item 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on. I'm going to connect this to the index. And if I hide the original set of lines, you see that I only have every other line here. Okay. Now, in order to get the other range, which is the odd numbers, it's all going to be the same, except that the start is going to be number 1. So now this is going to give me numbers 1, 3, 5, 7 of the list and so on. I also need to bring another list that get item at index, but this time the index is the odd numbers. Okay, so it's 1, 3, 5, 7 and so far. So I want to rename this as arcs odd rows. Okay, and this other group is going to be arcs, even rows. So, arcs, even rows. Let's be consistent. Okay, so I have odds and even rows, right? So, next I want to uh, divide each of those uh, set of arcs by some value. Okay, so I want to go with... Uh, geometry curves curve because these are actually curves right 
and then I can go with points. I want to get points, so I need to scroll down at equal segment lengths. This is what I was looking for. Item goes to curve, and I want to assign some slider, integer slider actually, because it has to be integer numbers that's assigned to divisions. Let's say at minimum I want to go with 5, at max I want to go with 30. Uh, how about I divide it by 10 for now, and I'm going to connect this division to division. Okay, so this is for the even rows. For the odd rows, I will go again with one of these, get items, right? But maybe I can add some numbers to the integer slider so they are closer to each other, right? So whatever I have uh, assigned to divisions, I want to go with, let's say, n plus 4. So it's going to be a few more numbers here. And then I'm going to assign this to divisions. Oh, I'm going to put this back to 10. So see what happens. Just to show you, I'll put it on 5 for now. So now, the first one is only divided by 5 items. This one is divided by 7 and so on. Okay, so if I get rid of the first and the last items on the second uh, set of lists, then it's going to start jumping up and down when I connect the lines. Right, so let's uh, move this back to 10 maybe. Now, from this list, which has some extra items, I want to drop the two first one and the two last one. We're going to have the same number of lines, but because the distance is different, they're going to uh, look like they have jumped up and down. So I want to go with drop. If you right click, go with drop. And because I added four items, I need to add two items from the beginning. Okay, but see what happens. Now, if I assign it, it's going to get rid of the last two lists. But I want to get rid of the last two items in each of the lists, right? So in this case, I need to uh, tell Dynamo that go with levels and remove them from my list too. So now you see in each of the list, the last two items are removed. Okay, so have this in mind. I want to go with another drop item. Now I want to remove uh, actually negative two, which is the last two items from the new list. Okay, so now if I show you this one, uh, instead of 12, we re remove two items from the end, two items from the beginning. So now we have eight items on each list. And see here, we already had eight items in each list, right? So let me hide this set of points, hide this set of points. Okay, now you see we actually have eight divisions, right? And uh, the start is different. So now if I make some lines, they're going to uh, look like uh, the project that we are working on. Okay, so how about I organize these items here a little bit. I'm going to keep this here. Okay, I have a set of points here. And now I want to create a set of points. So I want to go with line. Okay, now first let's connect those set of points to this set of points. So now we have one set of lines. Now next, so now from this set of points, I want to get rid of the first item. So then it's going to assign lines from the second set of points to the third set of points. So I want to go with drop again, and I will drop the first item from this set of points, and I will assign it to the start point here. Okay, now we have all the points that we wanted. Uh, see what happens if I increase the values here. I want to leave it on 10 so it, my computer is uh, handling that easier. But after you uh, set your Dynamo file, you can play around with different values to see what's best for you. Now let's see what we have here. We have a list inside the list. So I want to flatten these two. So till here, okay, if I group this, these are the points on arcs, and now I want to right click, type flatten, and flatten each of these items. 
because this was a list inside the list, I need to flatten them to become one list. Now I can actually join the two with a list create to become only one input. Okay, now maybe I can make them a little bit thicker. So I want to go with thicken, thicken by thickening curve normal. I want to assign a very small number so the lines are a little bit thicker. So they look at, like actual elements. I want to go with the Z axis for the normal and I want to connect least to the curve. And then I want to extrude them slightly as solid. Now that I have a curve, I want to extrude as solid by distance. Again, I'll go with maybe 0 0.03, like um, three centimeters. And now if I zoom in, you see that these are actually real solid elements. Okay, so, so far we have our uh, smaller lines. It's a set of solids. I can go with solid by union to see if we can join them. They reduce to only two. Now I will go with solid by union again. So all of those items will reduce in only one set of solids. Okay, so uh, these are our uh, smaller uh, structural elements. So I want to create a group here. How about I move this one here, move the last one here. I want to uh, create a group and I want to name it as uh, the smaller uh, structural elements. Okay, and now we have all those curves. Um, basically, I'm talking about this set of curves that we had, right? We also need to uh, we also need to take care of those main structural elements, which are the big arcs here. And uh, you can create them again using extrude, or you can use even sweep. Just to show you something else, I want to show how to use sweep to create some items over there. So this set of curves that I have over there, I want to get the start point of each of the curves. So as soon as I connect the curves to curve, it's going to create one point over there. And then I want to use, um, basically I want to go with solid, sweep solid, this item. Uh, these arcs are going to be our path. For the profile, I'm just going to create some circle. So I want to go with circle uh, by center point radius normal. The center point is going to be the start point of those uh, isolines. So this goes here, right? Uh, and to uh, the radius, maybe I can assign a smaller value. How about I go with like point? two or something, I'm going to assign this to the radius. So now there is a small uh, circle over there. You see that? And then I want to assign this to the profile. So those are our sweep objects. Feel free to make them larger if you think they are uh, larger. Okay. Uh, so again, these are solids, right? Uh, I can union them. So I want to go with solid by union. It's going to turn no matter how many solids you have into only one solid. So I want to name these set of points or nodes. I want to create a group and I want to name it as main uh, structural elements. Okay. Or I could have used primary and secondary. How about instead of small, I would go with secondary. Uh, search elements. Now we have two sets of uh, geometries, two sets of solids, our main search elements and the other one. Uh, how about I move these a little bit inside here. So I'm going to move this over there. Now uh, I have one set of solids over there and one set of solids over here. So I can union the two sets of solids. So by the end, we're going to have one 
and only one set of solids as you see here and maybe I also want to import the sweep surface that I had before right so I have one object here and I have one object here I want to import them separately because I want to assign separate materials in Revit so I would go with import uh, by geometry or by geometries in this case does not matter because I have one object here which is a surface one object here which is a solid so I can go with uh, these two make sure that you have also put your file on manual like mine and I want to run this uh, you can save your dynamo file and close it uh, the rest we take care of in Dynamo. So uh, you remember that in Revit 2022, when we import objects, they are already imported in feed. So I need to insert the conversion rate, which is 0.3048 here. And to the second set of objects too. Now they go uh, to their place where they should be. And they're in the right size. Uh, you can see them in different views and now if I go to manage object styles imported objects one of these default categories is the glass the other one is uh, the search elements I don't know which is which uh, I, I should have changed the ID but I will assign glass to one of them and uh, then we will know which one is which one this is good I'll say okay apply so that was the right one. This first one was glass. The second one is probably my uh, search elements. I can assign uh, maybe stainless steel or something. This should be good. Okay and okay. Now uh, this is the project. You see it's in right dimensions uh, and you can get your um, plan view section and everything else. Uh, feel free to add a camera or something just to remind you how to take a camera or create a camera go to view when you are on a 2d view like level one under view go to camera from here and maybe i would like to draw a camera like this when you have set your camera in the camera view settings you can uh, actually maybe remove the far clip active so it's gonna show the items on the back if you have any feel free to adjust your uh, camera size here and add some components human beings so we know the scale and you can import you can take a render from your file uh, feel free to turn on the shadows move this to shaded realistic or other modes uh, just to show you if you don't remember how you would add um, human characters you can go to massing and site site components I can go there load family and I want to go to my US entourage and I can bring some of these characters okay and you see there are different characters here I will uh, put one of them here in the file so it's going to give us some skill maybe I can bring one or more so someone is standing over there so now this starts to um, have a little bit more of a background uh, when you save your file uh, you can change the options to one so there wouldn't be that many backups one backup is enough uh, that's it for this video please like and subscribe for more videos thank you very much